We've reviewed the basics of investments in the overview video. This one looked more closely at how to handle trading and available for sale classifications. If you recall, these are the two of the three classifications for investments when you lack significant influence. And to review the difference between the issuer and the purchaser, the investor and the investee, it's an asset or equity with bonds, it's a liability or it's an asset. And if you invest in bonds, you could buy it at a purchase price less or more than the face value. So you'll be dealing with an amortization of that contra or adjunct asset. On the issuer side, that discounted premium, of course, was amortized through interest expense. On the purchaser side, when using the fair value method, it's amortized through revenue. Levels of influence, if you have less than 20%, you're required to use the fair value method and investment classification is required. And these are the three classifications. Trading, available for sale and held to maturity, and this all has to do with intent, what you intend to do with it. If I intend to buy it today and sell it tomorrow for a quick gain, then it's classified as trading. Day trading is trading securities. But the majority of corporations will invest for the long term, and that would be either available for sale or held to maturity. Trading can be either stock or bonds, recorded at fair value, and periodic fair value adjustments are required. Same for available for sale. Held to maturity is different. Held to maturity is bonds only, because stock does not mature. It's recorded at amortized cost. These are the four times when journal entries will be required. The purchase, recording of revenue, fair value adjustments, and selling it. So if it's trading, here's an example of, of bonds and stock. It's called investment in bonds, and usually the company name, and then investment in stock, and the company name that you've invested in. Available for sale, identical. Second time you may be required to do a journal entry is when you get income. If you invest in bonds, you get interest, interest revenue. We're calling it investment revenue. Invest in stock, hopefully you'll get dividends if they declare them. It's called also investment revenue. Recognizing income with available for sale is identical. Notice with trading and available, you're amortizing the discount through that revenue. Fair value adjustments the third time. Trading securities. Here's where we're going to see a difference between trading and available for sale. With trading, we have an account called fair value adjustments. We use a different account. We don't adjust directly to the investment account because we need to track historic cost. This allows us to track both. So not only do we maintain historic cost in the investment account, we're also tracking, tracking fair value and it's recorded on our balance sheet at the end of the year with a proper valuation. The offset in the journal entry is called net unrealized holdings gains or losses dash income. It's recorded immediately to the income statement as revenue and the first example is a gain the second example is a loss. These are end-of-the-year adjusting journal entries. With trading, it's included in net income, which then closes to retained earnings. Available for sale is handled differently. It looks very similar, but we have a different equity account. Now, both are shown here, equity and OCI. If you are in an introductory accounting principles course, just being introduced to these concepts, you're not going to see OCI. It's going to probably just be called equity depending on your textbook. But other comprehensive income is a component of equity. And when this is studied again in intermediate accounting and then possibly in advanced accounting, it's called net unrealized holdings, gains and losses, other comprehensive income. But just keep in mind that is a component of equity. So both are shown here. 
key for you to remember is gains and losses. Those unrealized gains and losses on trading are included in income, so it's going to end up in net income, which then closes to retained earnings. Available for sale, those unrealized gains and losses, those fair value adjustments are recorded in equity in an account called other comprehensive income. Again, if you're in a principles course, you probably just see the term equity. If you're in intermediate accounting, it's, you're going to be learning the detail of what other comprehensive income is. Other comprehensive income is a temporary account. Just like income summary was that temporary account. Close revenues and expenses to income summary, then close that income summary to retained earnings. With other comprehensive income, it's a different temporary account, which then closes to accumulated other comprehensive income. So think of AOCI as very similar to retained earnings, that permanent equity account. This allows you to maintain true earnings as opposed to fair value adjustments, these valuation adjustments. Now when you sell a bond at more than what you purchased it for, you record a gain. Same with stock. If you sell it for more than you purchased it for, you record a gain. These are just an example of the gains. You could also sell at a loss. Available for sale, identical. When you sell it at a gain or a loss, So trading or available, you are required to do fair value adjustments. The difference is where you track those things. And fair value adjustments are recorded separately. We record them in income because trading happens so quickly, it's thought to it, it would end up in income anyway when you do sell it. The available for sale, you could be holding that for a number of years, and we want to track the fair value adjustments separately as a separate component of equity. That way you maintain historic cost at the same time those investment assets are valued correctly on your balance sheet. And this is also part of full disclosure. It will, those fair value adjustments are year-end adjusting journal entries. These are unrealized gains and losses as opposed to realized gains and losses. Now, if you did sell it and you did have a realized gain and you had recorded an unrealized gain before, you're just moving unrealized to realize. You're adjusting so you're not double counting the unrealized gain and the realized gain. There's no effect on other comprehensive income with trading because it's always recorded immediately in earnings. Available for sale. You're going to have to, this is going to be part of your end of the year adjusting journal entry with your other investments. If you sell it, you're simply reversing out your prior adjustments so you're not double counting an unrealized fair value adjustment gain with a realized, a real sale gain. This avoids double counting of gains. Now, how do these transactions affect the statement of cash flows? Well, if it's, it's trading, it's that day trading, it's that fast trading, it's part of operating the revenue and buying and selling it, the cash flow from that. With trading, it's different. Dividends and interest are revenue, it's part of operating, but selling it, the cash flow, that's investing. This is a key to remember. Trading is operating, available is investing for buying and selling. So how do we classify and the differences? Well, it depends on your intent. Do you intend to buy it today and sell it tomorrow or sell it this afternoon? Then it's trading. Now, these investments do not include treasury stock. Remember, treasury stock is a contra equity. We're talking about investing in other corporations, not in our own corporations. If it's extremely short term, it's a current asset, and that would be usually trading. More common, though, most corporations have available for sale and held to maturity. Trading can be bonds and stock. Available can be bonds and stock, but held to maturity is bonds only. But these are all assets.
Now what if I make a change? What if I classify it as one thing and I want to change it? So if it's trading and then I think, well, I'm not going to sell it right away, so I'm going to change the classification to available for sale. Anything has that's been recorded with this is already in earnings, so no adjustment is required because it's already in net income. Moving to held to maturity, if say it's trading and then I decide I'm going to hold it till matures, no adjustments required because it's already in net income. Remember trading, everything goes into income immediately. Available for sale. So let's say I classified it as available for sale, but I decide that's not correct and I want to move it to trading. Then I need to adjust my current net income as if it had been classified that way all along. Moving to held to maturity, the existing fair value adjustments in other comprehensive income are going to be amortized to net income over the remainder of the life. And keep in mind in accounting principles, this is just a basic introduction. You get much more practice of how to do this in intermediate accounting.